So in this session, I want to look at actually virtualizing and actually deploying Adobe Reader 10 using app v4.6 SP1 and actually take advantage of one of the new features of SP1, which is package accelerators, which is essentially someone has gone through the process of virtualizing an application and done any sort of modifications and customizations required to make that application run in the most efficient manner within that app v virtual environment. And during this, we actually see the, the complete process. So I have my clean sequencing machine. On that, I install the 4.6 SP1 sequencer, which actually makes you enforce a lot of the best practices around sort of disabling any malware, defender processes, disabling Windows Update, uh, typically Windows Search. I don't want any changes or updates going on in the background, which the sequencer may get confused about and think is part of the application deployment. So I have my clean OS with nothing on it, as minimal as possible. I'm going to actually install Adobe Reader 10. So when I launch the sequencer process, it's actually going to create that virtual environment. If you remember, the way AppV works and allows applications to run on a local OS instance without installing it, is it creates these virtual environments um, that contain virtual layer for the virtual file system, registry, uh, com objects, user mode services, fonts, INI, all these different areas. And it captures that. And when the application runs, the application thinks, hey, I'm, I'm seeing all this information, the file system, the registry, the services. But in actual fact, they're only visible inside the application's virtual environment, its own little bubble. The way that's created is the sequencer says, okay, let's install the application. So the application installs and during that install process, it's monitoring what's going on and captures that into this, this virtual environment, this stream. And again, that contains not just the file system changes, but also changes to the registry, to user mode services, to com, etc. So now we actually have within this stream a virtual version of Adobe. All the changes it made to the machine related to the application are now captured within this virtual application. We want to go one step further because this could still be quite large. And the goal is I want it to deploy as quickly as possible on the first time a user runs the application. Also, what I should point out, not only did we capture the application's content, we also made a note of any shortcuts it made, the icons, file type associations. Obviously, what we're going to want to do is deploy those to machines before they even run the application for the first time so it's available, so the file type associations are there. So now we've captured the virtual application, we want to make it more efficient and optimized. So now as part of the sequencing, we actually launch the application. And what it does is during that launch, it watches and says, okay, well, what was actually required to open up the initial application window? Which bits of that whole stream? We can see the hit, those here in the purple. So now it knows to actually launch the app out of all of that file, they're the bits I need. So it actually moves those to the start, it's called feature block one. And that's what's required to launch the app. And then everything else, it just becomes feature block two. So we now have this optimized version of the application. And then we copy it up to the app v server. And then the app v server, we would import that and make it available to certain users um, based on maybe group memberships. When someone actually wants it, they, they check in with the app v server. And remember, we separated out the icons of file type association. So they do a refresh and that will just appear on their desktop. They've not run it yet, they've not installed it, but it's there. And the file type associations will be there now. So they can just click a PDF file and it knows that's associated with the virtual Adobe application. When they do click it, all it does initially is pull down feature block one and the application opens. If they try to access another part of the Adobe that wasn't in feature block one, it can pull those down in, in small chunks. But in the background, it actually pulls down all of feature block two anyway. So it's all pre-cached. And this, this orange area, that's the local cache. So it doesn't have to pull it down from the server every time we launch it. It brings it down once, stores it away, and that's actually shared between all users on the machine. So it doesn't even have to pull it down once for each user of a shared machine. And if we have a VDI environment, this cache file can actually be shared across multiple OS instances 
and with 4.6 SP1 shared between remote desktop services, session hosts. So even more powerful. So that's how it actually works. Let's actually go and in 600 seconds, capture Adobe, sequence it and get it deployed out. So this is our sequencer machine. I've already got the app V 4.6 SP1 sequencer installed. Just best practice, going to go through and stop things like Windows Defender, if it was running Windows Update, any malware protection you've got, uh, Windows Search, unless we're trying to sequence Office. Now I'm doing this manually. This is actually done automatically as part of the 4.6 SP1 sequencer now. There's a lot of things we did in the past manually that now the sequencer does for us. So it's actually a lot easier to sequence things. In the past we created dummy printers, dummy ODBC connections to avoid any conflict when it was deployed. That's actually not necessary anymore. So now I'm actually going to go grab the Adobe Package Accelerator. I've already downloaded from the gallery. And I downloaded Adobe Reader 10. And this is the command to expand out that single XE to the actual installation files for Adobe Reader 10. So I'm going to take that and copy and paste it to this local machine. And now I can actually just go and kick off the sequencer. So again, another best practice, if you have UAC, user access control running in your environment, you want to make sure the sequencer is using it as well. So I'm going to create a new package. Notice our new option now that we can manually create a package, which says it has more steps, or we can use that package accelerate, which is what we're going to do here. If you know, take a note of the time at the bottom, it's sort of 348-ish. <laughs> so we're going to look, open that accelerator. A lot of them will give you guidance or maybe the version of software you need to do if there's manual steps you need to perform. So you should always read through that guidance. And it's actually uh, pretty simple for the Adobe Reader. It wants the installation path, which is that extracted folder I created. So it's the filled in a name and a path. And again, notice now we're not actually restricted to that 8.3 file name convention we had in the past. You just use whatever you want. Notice it also gave me the option to compress if required. But given this less than four gigs and it's fairly small anyway, I don't need to worry about the compression. So I've cut out a bit of time here um, rather than wait for that virtual environment to load. Now I actually go in and run the application and when we select the app and click run, it, again, it loads into that virtual environment. And we can make any maybe configurations we require for organization, customizations, and just obviously make sure it's actually running okay. So that's gonna launch. Uh, we can then open a file. This is not creating the feature block one. This is not that, um, ascertainment of what's needed to initially open the application. This is so you can customize it. The actual decision around the feature block one that's streaming has already been done in this package accelerator. Normally, yes, there is a process to actually go and create that. So it can ascertain what needs to be in it. That's not required with this package accelerator. That's already been done for us. So again, you can wander around, look at the magazine, I'm just really testing the functionality is working so it's so like I did so anyway uh, about VDI so we close this down so we're happy we've done any customizations we wanted continue on and save it notice it also creates an MSI so not only does it create a virtualized version of the application it creates an MSI file that we can actually use to deploy it that would sort of pre-cache this virtualized application on a machine. So it's still using application virtualization, but it's now not stringed down from a server. We can just deploy it norm using normal enterprise software deployment technologies. So now taking that virtualized application and copying it up to my app v server.
and now I can actually jump over to my app V server and notice it's there I can then import it in before I import it in though it creates it with generic properties now I actually have a specific server and I use don't use the encrypted real-time streaming protocol so I'm going to open up the OS default is the descriptor and change its default which uses an environment variable for the app V server and just hard code in my single app V server and a folder which is where this content's actually stored and then once I can save that so that's what tells the client where to go to download that streamed version of the application so I'm saving it and now I can import this in I can create a group first though if I wanted to but since it's just a single application I don't really need to if I was doing something like office then yes I'm going to want to create a group so all the applications not just staggered around confirms the pass remember the icons the icons are separate so they can actually be sent to the client when the client just checks with the app v server for hey what what should I see I can define the shortcuts file type associations who's allowed to access the application so I'll just say everyone and that's it so now it's basically ready to be used by my organization and that's it if you have the app the infrastructure in place I sequenced Adobe Reader 10 I imported it in now on my actual clients let's connect to my client bring down the resolution so it actually fits in the recording now log in and actually as part of that login it, it would traditionally do a check with the app v server but I think I had a disconnected session so actually what we'll do is we'll we'll emulate a login so we'll go to the publish server and just say refresh this is like logging in it's just basically going to the app v server saying hey what should I know about I noticed that Adobe Reader has just appeared it's not installed but remember I talked about the shortcuts and the file type associations and now I click on a PDF so it knows the file type association and if I refresh you get the icon that's pulling down that feature block one doing a couple of quick checks maybe pulling down a few extra blocks and then it's actually just going to open up on this client and I can actually see if I do a refresh how much of that application oh and it's now up and running if I look it's only pulled down so far 38% now it's got to 92 so that's it in the background pulling down feature block 2 but it's actually up and running even before it's finished downloading it all because that's the whole point it can prioritize what it needs if I launch it again this time it doesn't have to pull down that feature block 1 it's pre-cached it opens that much faster and that's it I mean that is deploying Adobe Reader X to your environment with that be in uh, look at the time it's been 10 minutes uh, thank you